So therefore, the spiritual master comes and he teaches us what's good for us and what's not good for us. Because he loves us and he shows us. You want to have good things? Well, there it is. Eat good things. Offer them to Krishna. Now people say, what about eating this? What about eating that? And he says, just eat what Krishna will eat. Eat prasad. What does Krishna eat? Well, he doesn't eat onion, he doesn't eat garlic, he doesn't eat mushrooms, he doesn't eat meat, he doesn't eat fish, he doesn't eat eggs. What about the rest? Yes, he does eat it. But what about organic or inorganic? Well, this is a big problem we have. In the last hundred years, you know, all the devotees in the past, they didn't have that problem. Nobody was offering chemicals to Krishna because there was no chemicals. Everybody had organic agriculture, etc., etc. We're just talking about the Bulgarian gardens, no? Everybody had an organic garden and beautiful gardens. They were competing in Bulgaria. They were competing about who has the most far out tomatoes. They had a tomato competition: blue tomatoes, yellow tomatoes. Huh? <coughs> black tomatoes. Every tomato they had, you know, and they all little taste like this. The people they could taste, let me try this tomato. That's a very good tomato. To, to people. Today people have no idea what is a tomato. Why? Because they just eat tomato ketchup. And the tomato called ketchup is with filled with uh, monoglutamate. So it's they put on top of the ketchup, they put the spice, spice burnouts, you call them. You, when you put yourself on the spice burnout, that means you have like, like aspartame, they, they think they're so strong, they're so, they don't go like, you lose the taste, you can't taste anymore, is it sweeter or this, you only have the, it's called the fifth taste. I just read an article about that. It's like a kind of the, the, the flesh, the, the eating flesh. So when you get the eating flesh, and that's what the monoglutamate uh, does, because and it, it makes you addicted. You want to have it again. You want to have it. <laughs> <laughs> then you get, a, you get a, like a, a cauliflower. Actually, cauliflower has a very nice, nice taste. Hmm? If you taste it, just flowers have a taste, but you become addicted. Just like the chili eaters, they can't taste anything if there's not a chili. So therefore, they eat something, then a green chili. Very nice, very nice, huh? You can't taste it. It's not just green chili what you're tasting. Hmm? So it's like that, you know. They, they, there's a certain level of the senses, like maybe you call it a flash or or, or an orgasm. As a, a taste orgasm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and and the powdered sugar that creates the same thing. That's why we are also sugar addicted. Mm -hmm. Because we we don't really taste the sweet. We don't taste like for example you have you have cherry and banana. Well this is an incredible taste. It has its natural sweet. Mm -hmm. But then they put that in the thing plus white sugar and then you go the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you don't know, you don't taste anything. And this is very addictive and very dangerous and very unhealthy and we all know it. We all know it and we all hope to it. And then there's the caseine and then there's cadaverine and then there's so many different... Uh, those who appeal to our neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitter, you know what's a neurotransmitter? How you, how you explain it? Na, die Botenstoffe im Gehirn. Yes, it is. It is a function or something uh, in the in the in the brain which gives like full satisfaction message, and like this dopamine, and there's something, and some of them are so strong, they can blow you right out. You can become dismayed. Like when a person is faints, 
or when there's some uh, anesthesia, there's like they they take some, your brain transmitters to a level of not being able to distinguish anymore. Then you go out. So the chemists have to have to admit the admit, you have to admit the chemists are very expert people. They have found so many things about taste nowadays. They can produce any smell, any taste, and any uh, uh, any aromas. Yes, they can produce them all artificially. It says artificial coloring. Thank you. Why do I need artificial coloring? What is this? You want to eat artificial coloring? Why don't you eat crayons and start uh, drinking oil paint and acrylics? You know? well, why do you want to have artificial coloring in your food? Are you bananas? <laughs> huh? Can you please paint my tongue? Huh? Hmm? This is so crazy, no? But they, what about artificial flavoring? Where the heck? And you know something? These companies who are producing this artificial stuff, they have reserved their commercial rights to not reveal their recipes. In other words, you don't know what the heck you are eating. You don't know. Is that addictive stuff in there, is there poisonous stuff in there, is there cancer, -y, cancer creating stuff in it. Do you know? No. The E's, E this, E that, all these so-called permits, how do they get the permits to put the E stuff inside? Because they bribe the officials, man. That is a big business. The one who authorizes his stuff, and he's getting money. So the money-making machine, and they're happy because they know when you eat monoglutamate, you're a sure customer tomorrow. You like it? Uh, again. Even I must say, we have also, I'm not saying that I'm perfect in these things, but you get this Kräutersalz in Germany. Kräutersalz. And the devotees were very... F they all liked Kräutersalz because it sounds so good. Oh, it's salt with spices. <laughs> but what's inside? Well, most surely there's onion and garlic inside. And we are not supposed to eat or offer onion and garlic. Unless a doctor tells you, Ayurvedic remedy, you have to use some onion for something, for something, there may be that, no? but otherwise, we are not supposed to offer onion and garlic, we should live without that. That's what our teachers tell us, so in this way, Kreutersalz, no, we don't use that. If you want to have more spices, put pitacin in. Or, or grow some other spices, or, or get some organic ginger, then you can have it. If, if you want to have the kick on your taste, well, find out a kick which Krishna also accepts. In ginger, Krishna eats ginger, so no problem. And if you need more kick, then just eat more ginger. Chew up a big thing. Then you can get a good kick out of it. Hmm? Hmm? Mango powder. Mango powder? Have you try? No. Oh. Is it spicy? It's like a devotional monolatrum glutamate. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same effect. Like sour and sweet together. Yes. Well, <coughs> so, just see, there are solutions for everything. So, but we have to be careful with ourselves. We have to look after our devotees. We have to protect them from confusion, from dangers. It's our duty. It's our duty to protect ourselves. And if people say, I don't need protection. I'm already saved. Hmm? Well, you're like a newborn Christian. And you think, I'm saved. The devotees are noticed by accepting they are not saved. 
They, they, they are known by saying, I'm not a devotee. A devotee is known, known by saying, I have no taste for the holy name. A devotee is known by saying, uh, I'm, I'm the sinner of the sinners. A devotee is not saying, oh, I'm very mature, I'm an elder devotee now, I can discriminate, I know which drug to take and how much to take and when to take, I can control that and, and uh, all these things. You, you may imagine yourself to be capable to do it, but it's an imagination only and that's not the truth. It's not the truth. The truth is that the four regulative principles Prabhupada gave to us, they save us. They gave, up, they gave us back the human form of life. Prabhupada said, following the four regulative principles just makes you human. It doesn't make you great yogi yet. <laughs> oh, you know something? What? I'm very advanced now. Why? I follow the four regulative principles. <laughs> Good. Now finally you became a human being. Congratulations. <laughs> what, what, what was I before? Half of a ghost? Half gone you were? Who knows where you're going? Hmm? Or you were aspiring for animal body? Animal body is good for sleeping. Hmm? Very good. You can become a bear. I still admire it how a bear can sleep for six months in the winter. Hmm? The frog. The frog can be in the ice. I don't know how they do it, what kind of models Krishna designed there, you know? That somebody can survive in the ice. Or some bees also, they get stuck somewhere and the winter comes and get Winterstarre. Winterstarre. No human being can do that. But the insects can. And the frogs can. And they stay. Well, how do you call it in English, Winterstein? I never heard that word in English. When somebody becomes like stiff. And then when he becomes warm again. I'm still here. The water is still here. The lake is still here. Let me find my girlfriend. Where is she? No, girlfriend's gone. The, the stork came and took her as the, as the morning, morning dish. Huh? So in this world, the material world, I mean, you want to become a frog and live through the winter like that? You want to become a, 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 a bear and sleep all winter in a cave? You want to have sex like a monkey with every woman on a different tree? What is what you want? You can have it. No problem. That's why that's why Lord Brahma created eight million four hundred thousand forms. It's no problem. If you don't like claws, take them off. None of the animals have claws. They have no difficulty. If you don't like claws, why didn't you take them off? Because the police will come and lock you up. Huh? That's a problem. So you have to go to some area where everybody wants to take off the claws. Hmm? But we, we, we don't believe in that. We don't believe that we should all run around naked. And it's too cold for it as well. Hmm? So we believe in something else. We believe in Krishna. We believe in, believe in the beauty of Vindavan. I mean, when good little baby Krishna runs around, he's also naked. Hmm? <laughs> but uh, Mother Yashoda is not naked. You've never seen a picture of Mother Yashoda naked. <laughs> It's not, not our idea. We don't want to see Mother Yashoda naked. Huh? It would disturb our vision. And then when the gopis are naked, only Krishna can watch. <laughs> because they're his wives. So in this way, Krishna consciousness has a full, full conception of beauty. Full conception of health, full conception of ecstasy, full conception of celebrations, of 
festivities, full conception of everything. How to run a nice family. How do you do how do you run a nice family? Very simple. You sit together with your wife and you say, How are we going to serve Krishna? How do we do that? What's our plan? We want to have a deity? Yes. We want to have a place where we can invite people? Yes. We want to have a farm so we can grow our own food and offer to Krishna? Yes. We want to help the guru in the city? Yes. And then you sit together, make the decision together, make the short, short term plans, middle, medium plans, long term plans, and don't argue about it and do it. And feel in ecstasy. Feel that, like I feel in ecstasy that I have a companion. I'm not staying in Berlin, unfortunately. Well, I used to. Sometime in my life I was in Berlin as well. But, and I'm in, I'm in Berlin. Hey Mandali, you help me? Hey Premkisho, are you going to help me? Are we going to do this together? Mandali says, yes, I think so. I came here to, to get something going. Good, 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 good. Hey, what about Partha? Partha, are you going to help me? Yeah. Huh? Okay, good, 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 fantastic, yeah. Uh, hey, Dal Chandra, are you going to be on the board? Are you going to do this? Well, then I feel attached. It gets very attracted. Oh, they're helping me. Oh, it's fantastic. Gupta, are you going to help me in, in my homework to make something for Prabhupada? Yeah! Then, then I get attached to that. So it's like the bodies. You, you work with somebody, we don't, want to let, we don't want to be let down. Somebody says, oh, I do this. And then he doesn't do it, and he's not anymore there, and his telephone changed. Hey, where is this guy? I love him, I don't know where he is now. He let you down, you made a, pra a plan together, no? I mean, this, this is what keeps us going, this is... Uh, uh, this is Satu Sanka Asanga. That you, you mean uh, Prashangam. Prashangam Ajaram Prasham. It's attachment to a Sadhu. That is good. Oh, yeah, you, we're going to do something in Munich, huh? Pati, you love it, huh? You and Mohini, and now you got Abai and Ramananda. Hey, you're getting a group there. It's becoming very wonderful. I mean, already we have to go to Munich because we have to see all these beautiful devotees there. Incredible. And they have become attached. Why not? Of course, if I'm not attached to you, then who am I going to be attached to? And what am I going to be attached to for what? Why am I attached to Satya Manjali? Because she's a, she's a great devotee. She wants to do beautiful things for Krishna. She has a great capacity. She may do it here, she may do it there. But if I'm attached to her, for what? Because to working for Krishna together is something, is a higher taste, is something very unique. And then you say, hey, you know, I need some help. Can you help me? Of course I can help you. What do you need? That's also part of it, no? Part of this devotional feeling of ecstasy is that we work together. We have a goal. We have a goal. And then we may accomplish that goal. Some of you, like Gupta, she was in Chakrima. What year was that when you were there? 99. Hmm? 99. 99. I was already. The temple was there already. already was there. Hmm? Yes. The big temple was already there. No, the one in the middle. The they were constructing the, the temple <coughs> recently. Yeah. So when you see that, oh, now they finished that. <coughs> they actually finished that, and then they did another thing and another thing. Wow, it's so beautiful. So beautiful to see when the devotees progress in their things, in their projects. It's so beautiful. Absolutely. And that's what our life, it makes our life meaningful. Because otherwise nothing is meaningful because we die any moment anyway. And then we're not going to take anything except our consciousness. 
That's what we're going to take. And if our consciousness attached to demigods, yamti deva, yadavratam, then you become a demigod. Pitrin yamti, pitrin vrataha. Or you're attached to your mother. Well, you have to go where she is now. She's a forefather. Bhutani yanti bhutija. Or you're attached to the ghost experience. Okay, then you go and become a ghost. Yanti mam yachinopi mam. Are you attached to me? Krishna says, then I can come to me. So you're producing your attachments by your images, by your chanting. If I chant Mahamantra, I become attached to Mahamantra and Krishna. But the mind is going to say, uh uh. Prabhupada said, chant, chant, chant. And the mind says, can't, can't, can't. <laughs> no, you chant. No, I can't. Come to the class. No, no, no. I'm very busy. <laughs> Come to Mangalati. No, no, no. It is too early. <laughs> no? The mind is a machine of making excuses. <laughs> Always have some excuse. By the way, when do mothers get up? When do mothers get up in the countryside when they have children? Hmm? What time they get up? Early. Before the children get up. Before the children get up. Before the sun rises. The natural cycle of of getting up is early. Early to bed, early to rise, makes you healthy, wealthy and wise. There's so many th things, you know. You can... Uh, it's just, there, there are things, you know. Prabhupada is not turning us into some weirdos because he made us rise early. Of course some devotees are very extreme. I was very extreme. I got up at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I could chant my runs before Mangal Arctic and for reading some books because I wanted to read all of Prabhupada's books. But I did that for myself. I never pushed anybody else to get up that early. And also I didn't last through it. Because I usually go to bed late. So then that, that regimen I can't follow anymore. <laughs> but anyhow, you know. You can be strict with yourself, but be always merciful with others. You want to be in Mangal Arctic? You be in Mangal Arctic. You want to encourage others to come to Mangal Arctic? Then sing them a song in the morning. Huh? Don't say, Chief Jago, Chief Jago. Hey, hey, hey. Go to Chandra Pole. And then they look out of the sleeping bag. Prabhu. It's very early. It's not early, it's under the Arctic. I'm coming to call your heart to come and dance. Don't you like to dance? Oh, yes. So get up and dance. Have a little dance in the shower and bum 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 and then we chant and sing and dance in Mangalam. <coughs> Great new day. That's why it's called Mangalam. It's called Mangal Arctic. It's not it's not uh, uh, the inauspicious ceremony, it's the auspicious ceremony, it makes your life auspicious. I've heard it like this, you know. I like to get up, I like to sing in the mornings, it's nice. And I think people should go get up to Mangal Arctic because they want to get up to Mangal Arctic. But at the same time, discipline is also there. And when it comes to class, I said many times, Hey, if you don't listen to classes in the morning, you're going to lose it because you're going to forget what this process is all about. <clears throat> like I'm trying to speak uh, things to you and trying to make sense to you. I mean, I'm trying to make you happy. I try, I'm trying to entertain you. I'm also trying to enliven you. I'm also trying to enlighten you. Because giving you some light on certain dark issues. Hmm? We need some light when things get dark. That's why everybody has a flashlight. And when it gets real dark, you pull out your flashlight. So when there are things dark, so we need some enlightenment on it. 
So this is green. And the greatest of all lights come to us through the auspicious images of Krishna Bhakti. And I said, Ka karma and jnana. I was just explaining karma. Yes, there's karma. There's beautiful things. Karma means work. Karma kanda means work as worship to get to obtain certain things. Anya vilasita sunyam jnana karmadi anavrita. The bhakta, he renounces karma for his own gain. He can have karma as devotional service. There's also work in devotional service. That's a different story. Because you make the service, but you're not negotiating the service. It's not that I do this service for Krishna, you will do this for me. No. We leave it up to Krishna. Krishna, you know what's good and what's bad for me. And jnana, the same thing with jnana. The subject of jnana is so important. And the bhakta renounces jnana. He doesn't want to know everything about Krishna. Of course, he loves to talk about Krishna, meditate about Krishna, sing Krishna's name, but he's not putting his jnana over Krishna. No. <coughs> not at all. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayochita Prayochita says, when you are worshipping Vasudeva, Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita. Yana Gyati Asumaida Gyam Jnana Chayat Bahitukam. When you do that, when you worship Krishna, when you do follow the spiritual master, cooperate him with him, are attached with the devotees, are attached with your husband, with your wife, make plans together, don't go against each other, don't compete, complement yourself. We are all different. Each and everyone has something to do. Complement yourself with others. And then what will come? Then you will get automatic understanding of what is Krishna's love. You will have no need for jnana. Jnana chayat haifakam. Whatever need for intellectual understanding, then will come automatically from within the heart. You don't have to read 5,000 books and analyze them all and compare this and like sometimes when you read many books you get, a little, you get a little depressed because everything you read you also forget. What did I read in this book? Ah, I get old and forget my mantras which I memorized. And now, now I'm finished because I will not remember Krishna in the moment of death. No. Because you can only remember what Krishna wants you to remember. That's why he says, Savasya Shamudi Desani Vishnu Matasvidi Jnana Maporamcha. I give the memory. I give the knowledge and I give the forgetfulness. So if Krishna wants you to forget, you will forget. If Krishna wants you to remember, you will remember. So we are bhakti means to put yourself in the hands of Krishna. And some people say, yes, I've tried that for so many years. I've put myself in the hands of Krishna, but I still feel that I need to get some other kicks out of it. I need to do some other things. That is very dangerous. Because Krishna has the supreme control of everything. And that will never change. Krishna is the supreme controller and by his control he will give you what's good for you. I've seen it so many times, my friends, that sometimes Krishna wants to favor a devotee. And he just favors them, he showers them with mercy. And another devotee, for some reason, is not showering with mercy. Because he's not meant to have more. He's meant to get some other type of lesson. No. There's no way you can control that. And this is going to be the same way until you die. In the moment of death, death you can be showered with mercy and you can also Krishna says, I will reward you accordingly. Huh? I said, I not I reward you according. <laughs> That's not my position. I will I cannot reward anybody. <laughs> but he says, Krishna, the Supreme Lord says, 
as you surrender unto me, I reward you accordingly. Mm -hmm. the Bhagavad Gita is so sweet, it's so clear. It's a top book of theism. It really explains the relation between God and the Jiva. And so, Sarvadana Parijaja, Mami Kamsananandraja. You just surrender unto me. Give up all other type of religious considerations. He says, give up all other kinds of religious consideration. He doesn't say, give up all other kinds of entertainment. Because if you're serious in spiritual life, you're not engaged in entertainment anyway. You're just engaged in religion. So he's saying, give up all different types of fruitive, calculative religions and just surrender unto me. I will take care of you. Do not fear. So what kick you need to get out? Oh, sometimes, maybe, maybe I have no taste for the Holy Name. Yes, I believe that. Why do I believe that? Because I also don't have taste for the Holy Name. I Me? Mean, you don't have taste for the Holy Name? Well, I heard Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who says he didn't have taste for the Holy Name. So I don't feel that bad about it that I don't have a taste for the Holy Name. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself says he doesn't have taste for the Holy Name. He's God himself. But he seems to have lots of taste for serving the devotees because you're always serving the devotees. It's, anyway, it's, you, you see, this is the teachings, how a devotee feels. A devotee feels, I'm not advanced, I'm not a devotee. I'm nothing, I'm too, I'm not advanced. But we always want to get, oh, I'm the big yogi, I'm the big matuji, I'm the big leader, I'm the big temple president. No, you're not. I'm the big guru, I'm the big sannyasi. Now I know it better than my guru as well. No, you're not. It's very strange, you know, the devotees, the elder they get, the more humble they should be. And that we see in Prabhupada, Purimaraj, Purimaraj 1, Purimaraj 2, Sri Damaraj, that's how they were. Sri Damaraj said, that that's how bad they talk, talk, speak about me. Oh, that's only because they don't know how really bad I am, so they only say this one thing. That's how he reacted. Sri Ramayana said, Oh, you're all going, please pray for me that I may not go, go away from my Guru Dev's Lotus Feet. He asked me when I was with Sri Ramayana. I heard it with my own ears. Things like that. So great devotees, they're not saying, Oh, we are more fleshy and more shiny and more like, like they are. Like every day you get another star on you, a stripe on your, on your dress, you know. You're like the the Samadhi ecstasy, self-realized, uh, uh, um, what you call, it? condecorated, no? Like the military, you know, they have one star, two, three, four, five, all these badges, some of them have like, all the way, their whole chest is full of, look, that's me. <laughs> this is totally foolish. Completely foolish. Military people are very <laughs> foolish. Yeah. Huh? But what Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said is very interesting. He said, rank is just the guinea step, but man is the goal of it. Let me explain that to you. When you have gold, like a ring or something, then the, the people who work with the gold they know what kind of gold it is, 14 karat, 24 karat. And then they take a stamp. That stamp is called the guinea stamp. And they mark it on the gold. 14 kilat, whatever. This guinea stamp, you can put on mud also. If I take mud and I put 14 karat or something like that, Huh? That doesn't make the mud gold. If I put it in in uh, in a tomato, you can also see it, but it doesn't make the tomato gold. If I put it in in aluminium, it doesn't make the aluminium gold. In other words, the stamp is nothing. But still, why do they stamp the gold? 
because it's a quality guarantee from the manufacturer. So the rank, the title, Swami, Guru, uh, Temple President, this is another star, it's just a guinea stamp. But you and your work, your quality, that has to be the goal. You have to be, we want to get rank and file. We want to stand out in life. What did you do? I remember in the hippie times, one said, who are you? Well, I'm an old hippie. Yeah, wow, well, really, well, what does that mean? I already took 120 LSD trips. Wow, you must be an old flipped out guy. I mean, you must have really experienced 120 LSD trips. Huh? How long is your hair? Or in here, you know? You know? <laughs> that was the hippie rank and file. Hmm? How long is your hair and how many drugs you have taken? That was there. There. And maybe, and, and if you were to India, then you used to have your Afghan jacket. So, so, and the hippies, they had the whole fashion going on, you know? And if you wanted to be a good hippie, then you had to have some of that fashion. You know? <laughs> so we have this all kinds of fashions. Now we have a new fashion. And some devotees also create fashions. Prabhupada, there was this guy, he was bringing out this one tulsi, one, one, one uh, little silver bead, and another tulsi, another silver bead, another tulsi, another silver bead. That was for the ordinary, because the good ones had one tool, see one gold, one tool, see one gold. We have some special, special. I mean, it's like distinguishing yourself. Prabhupada saw that, and said, "What is this?" He said, "Oh, I got this from my wife." Prabhupada said, "I didn't want this type of thing. I didn't want fashion. See, from this is not. I mean, I also created the fashion. I must admit, I created the Indian color fashion." By the way, I have some Imli Talas here for my fashion. So if somebody of you does not have an Imli Tala, if you don't have, you know, I'm always supplying because Lord Krishna has been very, very, very kind with me, has given me so much Imli Tala wood. So it's always my joy because it is a Kalpa Riksha. It is a, you, you want to have the maximum, you want to have the best thing in life, and then take an Imli Tala and you get the best thing of life, because Imnitala is the best thing of life. It's a kalpa riksha, a desired tree, and I have experience of it myself, at, at least I believe in it, 100%. Hmm? 100%, I can't say, because I don't know even what belief 100% is, but uh, anyway, my brain is very inclined, that's why I carry it. So, so like this, you know, the, the sacred tree of Im Imli Tala, you know? We cannot get... Oh, okay, I was saying, you know, so I, some devotees, they are hanging an Imli Tala around their neck because they saw I, I do edit, so I, I invented that a little bit. But don't become proud of it, please. It's just for keeping the desire tree next to your heart so when you chant, it's more powerful. Krishna, please help me, please help me. Please let me become an instrument of your love. I'm, I'm a useless guy. You know, one thing is like you chant in the beginning, everything is enthusiasm, enthusiasm. And then one year, two years, three years, I'm still chanting, I'm still not a millionaire. What's happening? Something went wrong. Something went wrong in my chanting. Wait a second, who told you that from chanting you become a millionaire? If you become a millionaire, if Krishna wants you to become a millionaire, you worked a lot. <coughs> And then, better, half of your million is already engaged in devotional service because if you became a millionaire and you didn't give a half a million to Krishna, then you're only sitting on the fire of your fruit of activities. It's burning your butt. That's all. It's not going to give you fortune or nothing, all this money you sit on. You're not using it for Krishna. Thanks. Thanks. No thanks. I don't want to be Bill Gates. Hmm? Okay, he made the big foundation to invest money in, in, in vaccination and in, in, in transgenic uh, researches. Thank you. Hmm? 
no brain, you know, all useless. So careful, careful. But so, and some people say, I'm chanting Hare Krishna so long, you know, and now, now I have a pain in the back. That's not supposed to be. Well, where did you tell, heard that you chant so that you never have a pain in the back? It's not the deal. So we, be, we become older, we become this, we become that, and then we become morose and says, why is this, why is that, why did this not happen, why did that not happen? It's not right. You didn't read the books, you didn't come to the classes, you didn't read the chats, you forgot what it's all about. It's about becoming old in Krishna consciousness and lose all your teeth. You go, how are you doing now? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to make this. Hindu society is respectable. Oh, really? Hello, this is nice. You still haven't given up, huh? Hmm? That's what Krishna consciousness is all about. You become old and frail and die in Krishna consciousness. What's that? Aridai Chaitanya he died a few weeks ago in bliss in Krishna's hands. He was taken in Krishna's hands from Vrindavan directly to Goloka Vrindavan. He was taken in front of our eyes. That's Krishna consciousness. How to die? George Harrison, he, he, he so nicely wrote, We have to know the art of dying. And he knew it. George Harrison, when he got to the stage of dying, he surrounded himself by devotees and they chanted and chanted and chanted and he died. <coughs> so he knew it. The art of dying. We're not here for becoming fleshy, successful, recognized that we are out in the newspaper and, and everybody comes and says, congratulations, mister, now you're the first degree citizen for all the good things you have done. I mean, if that happens, okay. But don't be proud of it. I was I was honored when when I got an invitation to the natives of Colombia for the meeting for the meeting of all the natives for Equation Luna. You don't know how I felt. I felt so honored on behalf of Prabhupada. My spiritual master's contribution had been chosen to be invited through those people who want to save the world by becoming guardians of Mother Earth and they think this guy is a good guy, let's invite him, he has something to give. I was very honored if they would have said, he, he, you, you're, you're, uh, they want to give you the Nobel Prize. I don't think I could accept that with all these rascals getting the Nobel Prize. But maybe on behalf of Prabhupada I would have to accept because as many people they should also respect the devotees. But otherwise it's not a, a price worth accepting, so degraded it has become. But I'm just giving you an example. How to behave, what to do. I was received in Bukaramanga. Bukaramanga is one city. We are preaching there for 30 years. <coughs> for 30 years and Always good example against drugs and this and that. Then one of the mayors, mayors of Bukaramanga, he he had a liking for the devotees. I don't even know why, because he didn't even become a strict vegetarian, but he had a liking. And his son had a big accident. He was hoping the devotees give some prayer for his son, which they did, and his son recovered to a large degree. Anyhow, it's a separate side issue. So. Then somebody said, when the Swami comes to town, why don't you give him the key of the city, like an honorary reception? In, in a city, when somebody is coming and he's considered a special visitor, then there is there is a kind of a tradition, he gets the key of the city. No? So they said, why don't you give him the key of the city? He said, well, why not? Swami is coming here for 30 years doing this. Let's get it. So I came to Bukaramanga. I was invited to the mayor's office ceremony. All the people there, thank you for coming to us. Here's the key of the city. Very nice. Please give a little speech and this and that. Okay. Thank you. On behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I can receive this. 
because <coughs> the only reason I'm here is because my Guru Dev Bhaktivedanta Swami Robert, he sent me here. I have otherwise no business here. A few months later, two months later, he was kicked out from the mayor's office. Why? By the Opus Dei. Because he had given honor to a, another religion. He was kicked out from mayor and he was uh, inhabilitated in in for 10 years to do political work. No reason otherwise. Obviously, it was the Opus Dei. Anyway, he accepted it. He says, well, that's what meant to be. It was funny things, you know, you think. Just name and fame and money. No. We are not chanting Hare Krishna to get name and fame and money. But we are here to, pro to protect the devotees, to make service with the devotees, to glorify our Guru. That's why we are here for. We have no other business. We don't want to have a more important position in the society of the devotees. I am not the president of the society. In our, in our functioning work, the only thing important is to have a service. If you attach to your service because you want to do a service, it's very beautiful. But if you attach to your service because it makes you feel senior or superior to others, then it will be taken away from you. It's not. You don't. In Krishna conscious, you don't want prestige. That's what Nadanam, Nagyanam, Nasundarim, Kavitam, Vajagati, Shakamaye. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in the Shikshastakam. He says, we don't want beautiful women. We don't want followers of distinction and we don't want any monetary gain and benefit. We don't want that. We are not here for that. We are not joining the Krishna, the Krishna institution so we get name, fame and distinction. No. Then you never read the Shikshastaka. <laughs> but somebody has to take the honor. Somebody has to be the temple president, somebody has to be the sannyasi, somebody has to be the guru, somebody has to drive the car, somebody has to marry the woman, somebody has to be the father of the children and the mother. But if you think because of that you're more than others, forget it. You're not. You're not more than others. Not at all. It's difficult to understand the real essence of bhakti yoga. It's difficult. I, I, I know it's difficult because I don't understand it myself either. But I'm hearing this, I'm listening, and I'm associating with great devotees. That is my luck. I hang around with great guys. With Bodhain Maharaj, with Vishnu Maharaj. Oh, so many names I can mention to you. And so many names you never heard about because there are so many and I can't mention them all. If you want to meet the great guys I meet, you have to hang around with me. Those who went with me to India, they have seen that. How many wonderful people come, sannyasis, devotees, renounced women, hmm? Pratima. Pratima is one of the female spiritual masters in the Gaudiya Math. Most wonderful woman. She's, she's I, I told Prishni, Go and help Pratima, learn from her. Because she's right next to our temple, and she had, her temple is there. If you meet her, and Prabhavati Didi, Pishima, great woman, great, and so sweet, and so loving, and so clear. Hashi Didi, another great woman devotee. So, I'm hanging around with guys like that. So, therefore, I understand that I don't understand anything. Because it's a very elevated thing to really become a pure devotee in this world. It will probably take many lifetimes that we become real pure devotees. So what if it shall take many lifetimes? Then let it take many lifetimes, but don't waste a lifetime. Don't waste it. Because you don't know it's what happens. But one thing is for sure, The devotees, they're the best companion in this journey. But, careful. Then you think, the devotees and me, we together, we are the best. 
and the others are worse than us. Shit. That wasn't the conclusion you should come to. You said some, the devotees and me, we together, we are going to serve all the other beloved devotees and potential uh, brothers and sisters in this world and make them appreciate this wonderful gift our Guru Dev and Krishna has brought to this world. Not we are better than the others. No, that's not a good idea. You shouldn't think like that. Pride comes before the fall, that's all. So you're not becoming better. So we are not against people who smoke marijuana, we are not against people who take ayahuasca, we are not against people who eat meat, we are not against people who are corrupt, but we are against corruption, degradation, disviation, things which take you away from Krishna, we are against that. We are not in favor of that which disturbs, but we are not against uh, the tigers who eat a lot of meat. We're not against the people who, 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 who do things which we don't like to do. Congratulations if you don't do it. Congratulations, that's all I can say. It's not that we are against anybody. We don't demonize those who don't do what we don't do. Because it's crazy. Why should you demonize? If you want to know what's right, what's wrong, read the, the 16th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna makes it pretty clear. Da, 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 da. He, it, what's the chapter called? The demoniac and the divine characteristics. There's some demoniac characteristics which fit on me. Oh my God. I still have demoniac characteristics. I thought it was already divine. Hmm? But Krishna gives a long list of them for us to analyze, to understand. Confirm? <laughs> so, you see, I could go on and talk a lot of this about all this. I just wanted you to, to show these beautiful images, number one. We also have a new devotee here in the family today for initiation. This is the, this is the, uh, this is the message. We have the full moon. We hope today we have a real night, a night of singing and dancing. Uh, they said yesterday was real nice out there with the fire. So I invite Krishna Das to help us to make a very beautiful song night today and afternoon also so we can chant a lot in the different musicians, let's have some nice singing. And, uh, oh yeah, then after I give initiation to him, if somebody hasn't had gotten an Imli Tala, don't ask for an Imli Tala if you already got one, because I'm trying to spread them out to those who don't have. So, thank you so much, and uh, all glories to the Divine Lordship, now, I didn't really finish my subject of images in divine meditation inside. No. Inside of us, I must say, the, you can only do this recollection and meditation on Lord Krishna's sweet pastimes if you do listen a lot to the descriptions and read the books of Srila Prabhupada. Especially, I do recommend to you Chaitanya Chaitanya. This is very sweet images of, and you know, recollecting Radha Krishna is very elevated, but if you can recollect Lord Chaitanya's pastime, it's very, very safe. It's very safe. You, you make more easy advancement by recollecting those, and they, they will bring other higher thoughts almost automatically into your, into your pictures. And look, just look at them and meditate and talk about them and listening to the classes who are connecting us with the divine pictures, with the divine image of Goloka, Goloka Vindavan, Mayapur Dham, Gupta Vindavan, uh, Jagannapuri Dham, Kshetra Dham, Sri Kshetra Dham, Ah, so yesterday we saw 
Krishna Vilas had many pictures from that, from the holy dams you could see. And we are trying to make the holy dams more beautiful all the time. Thank you. All glory to the proud part.